All right. Uh, for our, we do not, <coughs> we do not have the minutes for last meeting, so we will table that until our uh, until our next meeting. Um, Christy had said at the beginning of when we got into this that she had a uh, commitment with her daughter tonight and she would not be able to make it. Uh, but it appears we have everyone here but Ms. Hunter. Um, so our first item is uh, the chairman's update. Um, and then we have a lot of stuff to go over with Mr. Regenball. Uh, just a little bit of an update. Uh, waiting to hear back some information from uh, Senator Deed's office. Um, Terry Austin will be here shortly. He was at a Botata Board of Supervisors meeting and he's on his way. Um, Chairman, or uh, Senator Deeds um, has sent positive info back and he's checking with some different folks in Richmond um, about the idea of the legality of our um, idea for board makeup. Uh, we've also gotten reports back from the attorneys, uh, which uh, Terry had asked that we look at uh, unintended consequences of, of this uh, of our, of our uh, proposed board makeup. We'll probably talk about that a little bit more when Terry gets here. Um, we haven't gotten any kind of reports back from our uh, people we talked to about, uh, unless I just recently got one, about the, uh, <coughs> the fiscal, the physical study, sorry, the facility study. Um, hoping to hear some information back. I was supposed to hear back from two of them before tonight's meeting and they didn't get back to me. So I uh, hope to hear more about that. Um, as far as everything else is going on, I believe it's all going to rely on, on Jim and, uh, and, what, and is Dick coming? He said he was. Okay. I talked to him yesterday. Okay. Um, and maybe we'll just hand things over to you and let you uh, get started and we'll hope that Terry will join us very soon. <coughs> Question. I don't know, uh, Terry Austin, mm -hmm. how long has he been in the general zone? How long has he been in your building? Uh, I think it, this would be uh, eight years. This, I think it's been in six years. Six years. Or I'm not as versed on the delegates, uh, gentlemen, because uh, I worked for the Senate Finance Committee for 12 years on staff from 87 to 99, so I'm kind of a Senate guy. And uh, um, I do know a lot of delegates. I just <coughs> have to know this gentleman. Um, so I was just curious what his experience level was and how, what committees he might be on, et cetera, because it's important he, to their influence. What they well, do. He's on shake up this year. Sure. Yeah, okay. big shake up. Is he Democrat or Republican? Republican. Republican. Okay. So we have, we're working both sides of the aisle. And in our center and delegate was on our team. <coughs> yeah, I mean that's uh, He was on uh, House Appropriations last year. Transportation. He may be on Ways and Means. Was he on Appropriations last year? No, he's not. Uh, I don't remember. He's not on Ways and Means. I didn't remember Appropriations. Yeah. He was on Appropriations. I know he was on Transportation because of the 81. Appropriations is the key one. Though. Yeah. That's what I was asking. Yeah. So, uh, First strings. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but you guys were must have done something right. You got four hundred thousand in there, so. And th that was another update to give our uh, give our group that uh, Susan Hogue that uh, helped us out last year that we were going to name the gymnasium after or something. Uh, she uh, has been relieved of her duties, and there is a, a new person in her uh, spot, and it's actually one of the people that we met with when we were in Richmond uh, at Dr. James Lane, James Lane's office. We haven't took the sign of the gymnasium. Yeah, exactly. So we are, we can change it. But, uh, yes, yeah, so And you might be worth, uh, you know, running this by too. It'd be helpful. Absolutely. Suggestions, so uh, whatever you guys decide. So, how would you like me to proceed? Just to sort of go through this, I, I um, you know, I, I asked whether you, before everyone got here, I guess, y'all had a chance to read it. Has uh, everyone had a chance to read it? Um, so I tried to boil into the executive summary sort of the key, the key points. You know, your, 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 if you look at your combined together, 
you know, even though Covington is increasing slightly in students, Allegheny is losing. Both of you together would still be losing them over time, notwithstanding, I think, what you said, because this has been going on for a number of years, the, the loss of, of general loss of students. And it, it fits with uh, the population. Uh, if you look at Weldon Cooper, 2010 census, which I did, and then you look at their estimates of each year, and then their projections in 20, 30, and 40, it's, it's, they're projecting to continue declines in population. So, uh, you know, along with pop, you know, population, student counts are gonna fall. So, I assume that that would continue. Um, uh, you know, I, I, we also looked, your, your divisions are similar in characteristic, uh, you know, racial characteristics, similar. Um, student achievement levels seem to be similar. Uh, so that makes consolidation in my book, it, may, it would seem to make it easier. Um, uh, I know that's been, th those kind of issues have been, to be frank, an issue in uh, Martinsville and Henry. So but they're not the same here. And, uh, so that would seem to make it easier. Uh, you can see how state funding follows students because the SOQ is um, paid on a per pupil basis. So um, when you lose students, you, you lose state funding and let all else being equal. Of course, there is inflationary increases, there's policy increases, which could offset the nominal number, but um, you're gonna lose that per pupil amount. You saw Covington gaining students there, so they actually you know, increased their their uh, state aid over that the time period we looked at because they gained some students and when you throw in inflation and policy increases you know that they're there they got a significant amount of additional state funding whereas Allegheny uh, County did not uh, because of the the greater loss in students and then the loss of a lot big I mean, it looks worse than it is because of the, the loss of the LCI that you were using from Clifton Forge uh, consolidation so it, it wasn't as much as, as it would appear um, because of that fact um, it was interesting to me to see that the Allegheny uh, school divisions you can see it their their teacher pupil teacher ratio in Allegheny did not it declined you got they got uh, less pupils per teacher over time that we looked at because it's difficult to re reduce numbers of teachers as numbers of pupils are declining because you still have to run classrooms. And so that's a sort of a, that's a statewide phenomenon with localities that lose students. <laughs> they lose an economy of scale, so to speak. They still have to run classrooms, but the thinking was that in a consolidate, in my view, and, and this is where it's gonna get difficult, I think, when you consolidate your schools, it will, it will provide you, I, I hope, an opportunity to have more flexibility in, in, in making your pupil-teacher ratio uh, a little more efficient, let's put it that way, so you could save some money. Because you're pretty low according to statewide averages in Allegheny. Uh, Covington's closer to statewide averages, um, but Allegheny's pretty low now. Um, so that's an opportunity in a consolidated school district. Um, and you know, you kind of see that, you know, I, I realize you've got to be really sensitive to, to actual individuals. And so um, that's why as, as one of the savings measures, you know, I talk about is a, is a, um, is a possibility is a, uh, an ERIP, an early retirement incentive program that has been used uh, in various places, different ways, but I gave you an example of one that Rockbridge County used. And um, it's, it was another interesting thing I, I, I noticed doing this was you have a lot of teachers that are pretty old. I mean, in the terms of the salary scale, you know, 25 years or more. <coughs> There's quite a few in, in both school divisions. So that's something that you should be aware of. Uh, if you do this, you would hate to have too many retire on you, I guess, you know, at one time. So, because um, you're going to need, obviously, need teachers and skilled teachers and mentors for ones you bring in. But if you manage this right, there's a savings. You you would not only right size your pupil teacher ratio, but the teachers you brought in would be at the lower salary scale, so you'd save money there as well uh, in the long run. Um, the other thing. Uh, 
um, you know, I, I I looked at for you was looking at both the central offices. And when you consolidate a school division, I'm 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 new to this 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 subject. I'm not new to K-12 in Virginia, but I'm new to look because there's not very many of them that consolidate. So I know Dick has done a couple, um, um, but I took a look at the central office, and you saw the table in there, right? And it was it was didn't need a whole lot of explanation. Um, I think that. Uh, you know, in a school division, even consolidated of your size, you certainly wouldn't need two sets. And how you get from A to B, again, there's people involved. That's why you have to figure out a way, you know, to make things work for <coughs> those people. And that's why this early retirement, I think you really need to think about how to, if you're going to go down this route and you want to make it more efficient, and save money, because that's where the savings would be in, in, in Right-sizing people, teachers, consolidating central offices, lower salaries with <coughs> people coming in. Um, yes. Okay. <coughs> we made all kinds of excuses for that. Maybe. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, yeah, on, on this the uh, Jim Reginald. Oh. Delegate Austin, your last name? Jim Reginald. How are you? Jim Terry Austin. Pleasure to meet you. Nice yes, sir. Um, so where were we? Uh, you know, other other places you, I saw interesting differences was Allegheny had you know, they had uh, lower pupil teacher ratios. They did have higher administrative operation maintenance. Transportation costs are 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 obviously the reason it's such a large county of a lot more space to cover. There might be some savings there with the consolidated district. Some people might not have to travel as far. Uh, what, with, with what schools you have open and how you, you arrange that, so that, that's possible as well. Um, I think uh, trying to, in a consolidated district, an opportunity to right size, you know, the, the O&M, the administrative costs, that will give you an opportunity to do that, because they were quite a bit higher in Allegheny than statewide averages. The, not to forget the transportation, the O&M and administration. So that's another area where consolidated district you can take a look at um, places to save. Um, it was also interesting that salaries were generally higher for teachers and some other groups. And I put a table in here uh, in Covington than Allegheny, except for the teachers in the early years. They had a flat scale through through year year six in Covington. So. First year, someone gets hired, it looked to me like uh, they were pretty similar. And then, because Allegheny had to step up in scale, that you paid a little bit more for your teachers through year five or six. And then immediately you get to that, and Covington bounced theirs up from their first step to the, after they kept it flat to the year six, then they immediately were paying more. So everything beyond that, they were paying more, even though they had a shorter scale. Even their 25th scale would pay more than your, and their officer would pay more than your 35th scale. So what I did to look at not anyone losing salary, and when you consolidated, it was like I, I literally took the higher salary of the two and gave it to that person. So if the Covington was making less those early years, they got the higher Allegheny salaries, that only, that only amounted to $13,000. So it was pretty small because there's not that many of them either in that, that early scale. So, and then plug in all the Allegheny teachers and then there was a few other categories I had as well. Uh, and it came up to, um, I'd like to pull that table up. It came up to $465,000, which would be the cost to, so nobody lost any, any, you know, nobody was paid less. Right. Page 20. And their counterpart. What page is that? 20. 20. Yeah. No, that's not right. Not page 20. That's table 20. That's just cash, right? Table no, 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 that's, not, that's just cash. That doesn't do benefits. No, that was, that was, that was, uh, that was just their salary because we, I looked at, I looked at benefits um, separately. 
and because there's different there's different levels of benefits. So. Now it's table 17 on page 37. So uh, the report. So I also did secretaries, custodians, and teacher assistants, and you can see the amount of compensation increase uh, you would need, and that included everything but the health benefits. Because you have, I think you need to make a decision about that too. Because Al, you both, both systems give pretty good health benefits. Covington very good, but Al, even Allegheny um, pretty good, compared, especially compared to um, statewide averages and your surrounding localities. Covington very good. So if you look on table uh, 20 for health benefits, there's Dick. Sorry. <clears throat> Everything that could go wrong did go yeah, wrong. I'm sorry, dude. There's a, there's a bound copy. Um, so you can see kind of, this isn't ranked, uh, it's by alphabetical order. But you can see these are the, the comparable counties surrounding you or nearby. And you're pretty much higher than the state would average at the bottom. You have very good health benefits here. So one of the ideas would be, I'm on page 41, Dick. We're talking about health benefits right now. Um, you know, you could slow your slow your increase in employer provided benefits to match the Allegheny level. You bring bring the Covington down. You know, it maybe keep. I'm talking about new hires. Let's say they're not grandfather. existing. Grandfather people in. They're existing. The new hires. You could put them more at the Allegheny scale. That would that would save money for at least from Covington's perspective into how you do this and, and you could even slow down your increase if you wanted to to match closer to your surrounding localities so that's an area in consolidation you could do going forward you know especially as you get new hires uh, again you, uh, how you implement that would require some some thinking and I think that's the one thing that everybody's kind of talked about we don't, we don't want this to uh, negatively impact anyone you know? Yeah, the point being is, is not, you're not going to slam into this right away. The point being is the consolidation gives you an opportunity to, to make some changes that can save, have long-term savings for you. You know, especially as you get new people. Like I said, there's a, there's a lot of individuals uh, in, your, in, in your school divisions that are, are have been there a long time. I don't have any idea how long they're going to stay, but um, if, you, if you were trying to right-size and um, provide an early retirement incentive program. You know, you're going to have new, new, younger, new people that uh, are going to be lower in scale, uh, and you can do some different things with. So, um, let's see if I missed anything. And uh, you know, you're, you're, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, but uh, your your composite index, you know, it, it, it indicates that you are. Relative, you're relatively low. You're not the lowest by any stretch, but you're <laughs> relatively low. The average, just to give you an average, you know, the state does its calculation so that the average would be the state providing 45% of the standards of quality in related funding, and you're below 30, both of you. So you're you're significantly below below that average, um, and and that's a reflection of mostly. Your, your numerator of the compile, which is that your wealth, your, your indicators of wealth, your ability to pay in the numerator. And they're, they're quite a bit below average. And I could, if you're interested in looking at that, I, I, put, a, I put a table in here. Um, let's find that one. Uh, table 13 and 14 on 32 and 33. And one of the ways I like to look at the LCI on, on page 33, table 14, I've got Allegheny first, Covington second. You look at, the, it's really the same math that's done because the way the LCI is calculated is your, is your share, of your percentage of the state. And so the, those are your percentage of the state of those five factors. And then you divide the two into each other. And if that numerator-denominator ratio is 1.0, you would have a 0.45 composite index. 
So you can see right now it's 0.26. That's why you're well below that 0.45 in Allegheny's case. And, and if you look across, you can see how you're changing. Your true value of real estate has stayed pretty, sa pretty much the same in, in, Al in Allegheny as a percent of the state. Your, your Virginia adjusted gross income, that's probably because of West Rock partly, but your, your, your share of the, of the state's adjusted gross income, you know, your income taxes has gone down. Your share of the state sales taxes has gone down. You can, you can see that your share of the ADM, which is the student population, the public in your school, that's gone down in Allegheny, and your population has gone down. So, interest, weirdly enough, the way the composite index works is that if your numerator shares go down, your composite index will don't go down. But if your denominator, your share of the state's population and, and ADM go down, that will make you go up your, your LCI because you're dividing against a smaller cohort. And so they, they, the way they do it, and it, it sort of it penalizes you twice. You get, you get fewer per pupil payments because you have less numbers of students, and then you get penalized on your computation of the LCI, making it go up. We're nowhere near penalized. Well, no, you're not, but, but you but, but you're, no, but, but you see what I'm saying, yeah, delegate? We could not survive without this. Right, my Our point, my point, could not survive. my point is that is as your populations go down, and it's nothing you're going to do and I'm going to do, it's going to, it's going to naturally drive your composite index up and make you have to pay more because your populations are going down. Now, the other side of the coin is, you're probably going to continue to see your wealth go down too in relation to the state, so that'll offset it, and that'll keep your. And that's what's happened. And that'll keep your composite index low. But if your wealth stayed the same and your population went down, your company would go up. And, and we recognized your that. We, we recognized recognize that a couple of years ago, and when we made a monetary contributions to school divisions in the in the Southwest who were losing population, they were and I think we, we gave each division. I've forgotten a certain allocation of additional funds. Yeah. There was an enrollment loss, right? Uh, there had to be a declining population in the region to receive that monetary. All right. Over an, over a, over a number of years, it had to happen too. So yeah, it was, I forgot. Yeah. yeah, it was over a number of years. Maybe it was. Yeah, it was. It was. Your next, sorry. Your next biennium, though, is uh, you're actually in better shape physically, which means you'll get less money. Because yeah, that that enrollment loss number is independent of the LCI, though. You see the rank is, a, is 101 for Covington and 105 for uh, uh, Allegheny, which actually you're better off. Uh, but you look at the, uh, well, there's not much difference really, is it? It's no. exactly the same. No. Uh, your, your fiscally stressed localities, as evidenced on Table 16, you know, it's, it's a simple way to look at the, uh, the uh, Commission on Local Government's Fiscal Stress Index. They've got Covington ranked the ninth most fiscally stressed locality in Virginia, and Allegheny ranked the 39. So you're fiscally stressed, and that's reflected in your composite index. How many, how many total? Mm, there's 95 counties and 36 cities, so it's 100 and There's 130, 134 yeah. school, school divisions yeah. that have the LCI. Yeah, but this is a local government rank, so there's a little, there's a few more localities than that, but not many. It's in the 130s. So um, there's another measure also on page 34, uh, which is fiscal effort. It's not the same as. Uh, as a commission, as a commission on local government, but it, it focuses only on education, where the fiscal stress uh, calculates everything, all governmental agencies. But it, it, it all the point I was trying to make is it all comes back to the LCI that you have is pretty accurate. You know, you're fiscally stressed, and that is showing up in your LCI. You know, which is pretty low. It's pretty low. So the state's paying a greater share of your of the standards of quality. It's a peculiar instrument in the Virginia. It's a, it's a really I explained it as a, a tail that wags a dog. If you look from year to year in Northern Virginia, if the economy in Northern Virginia is booming, everybody else gets poor. On the LC, as measured by the LCI. 
but if the Northern Virginia cadre of school divisions decline their, their economy goes south, you all get wealthy, regardless of your own economic uh, situation. That's just the way the thing works because a relative measure that you compare to the state as a whole. But the, the vast wealth that Northern Virginia has really depend, really shows where the, everybody else fits. But the dollars in proportion that local government give to our school divisions compared to what the dollars in proportion that Northern Virginia gives to their school divisions are just no comparison. No, you're exactly right. Our, our revenue, the majority of our school revenue comes from the state, not the local government. Up there in Northern Virginia, the majority of the revenue comes from local government, not the state. So, in layman's terms, I just want that's, people to understand that. That's, that's correct. That's exactly how it works. We couldn't live without Northern Virginia's monetary contribution. Our school systems would be in, in total disaster. Yeah, they send more money to Richmond than they ever get back. 60%, right now, 60% of all the revenue in Virginia comes from Northern Virginia, unfortunately. That's a problem we need to fix, but right now that's the situation. So, so um, a, lot of, a lot of information for you to, you to digest if you wish, but, the, the, you know, I, I think I summarize it, hopefully, for you in that executive summary where um, you know, your, your, your population and, eight, and your school population and your regular pie is declining. It'll probably continue to decline to a certain degree. Your LCI is going to stay relatively low, most likely. Um, Allegheny has a, a fairly low per pupil relative to the state in Covington. Uh, te pupil teacher ratio because it kind of hasn't kept up with the declines, the greater declines in, in, in pupils. Um, instructional salaries are, are generally higher in, in, uh, in Covington and Allegheny. Uh, some of your central administration salaries are higher in Allegheny than Covington, though, as you can see from the table. Um, you, uh, you have similar student characteristics, which makes it easier to consolidate. Some of the saving possibilities are trying to right size your pupil teacher ratio uh, when you after you consolidate particularly in Covington it save you quite a bit of money um, you could use uh, an e-rip program to um, help get there to that to those consolidated savings it would require some upfront money I think and that's where you might want to get the General Assembly to help you with some upfront money for an early retirement incentive program. Also, you might try to get the general assembly because you're going to have, if you try to keep everyone grandfathered into their pay as well, that's going to probably cost you around half a million dollars initially, that part of it. Uh, but you can save money uh, through lower salaries when, with newer people when they come in through that. You can save money through uh, raising your pupil teacher closer to the statewide average. And, and Covington's average, Allegheny's quite a bit lower. Um, you you uh, can save money through your central office consolidation. Um, and you may try to ask for, uh, you might be able to save money through health benefits because you're, you're quite rich there as well. You may like to stay there because that gets people to come to your locality and work here, so I wouldn't, that's, that's up to you. Uh, transportation cost savings could occur potentially. Um, but these all occur over time, and so in the short term, you might want to try to get, like has happened in the past, through, through when, when consolidations <laughs> have happened, the General Assembly, until very recently, you know this, would allow the lower LCI. That won't work in your case even to get it back because that's less than $100,000, because it's about one point only, a little less than one point. That would save you about 80 some thousand dollars currently, maybe with the new budget, 100000 So that rather than get you where you need to be, but um, so if you get them to help you with the, uh, uh, planning an E-RIP and paying for help you pay for that, so you can get some of those longer term savings and then supporting you for initially for the higher salaries you'll pay to equalize everyone, um, then you'd probably be able to make this work and then over time the state would save a lot of money because you could probably save quite a bit, relatively speaking, with those, those you know, what we're talking about here. Uh, and they would benefit as well because they wouldn't have to put as much money into this combined school district as well. So that would be the selling point. Is that a little bit of upfront money to get these longer term savings would help everyone. 
Yes, sir. Go on. Go ahead, Mr. Tucker. How about capital outlay? What if we needed some capital outlay in order to achieve this for facilities? Do you think that we didn't really look at that? We didn't really know what your capital outlay needs were. In the, <coughs> in the case of Covington, <clears throat> the old high school just probably needs a good bit of work. Uh, but the, the rest of the facilities for Covington are really quite good. In the case of Allegheny High School and the other schools, uh, feeder schools to Allegheny High, the building itself is, <clears throat> uh, I would say, in, uh, maybe not great uh, condition, but certainly good. It's no real uh, flaws. Uh, your elementary schools, the last time I looked, <clears throat> they were uh, probably in need of a uh, major repair and uh, I didn't go through it this time, so I'm not sure exactly what the status is. But uh, the last time uh, when I went through the elementary buildings, they were uh, the old egg crate type of building, and probably for modern instructional purposes. They've long since uh, outlived their usefulness. So on a long-term plan, probably, uh, should probably at least uh, start thinking about the question. Does that counter what's your general impressions? I, th I think most of us, what you said there, I think the, the high schools are, the, we, we have two new buildings for uh, elementary and city's case elementary. So yeah, we have our, our facility requirements to be debated, but uh, but yeah, going going forward, that would be something to consider. Sure. And that and that's one of the things that we we are uh, we are looking to do a, a a facility study to really find out the what we have to offer in all the buildings, and, and we all feel like in a whether we consolidate or not, it hasn't been done in 10 years to really take a look at all of our buildings. So, um, you know, it's, it's almost always, as you go from school district or school division to division, it's always the elementary schools that lag behind. I don't believe there's ever been at least a direct state um, involvement in capital outlay for consolidation. Of course, they've only done really the LCI thing, uh, but there's nothing to point to to say, you know, the state's going <coughs> to help you with your capital issues. Well, now we talked them into it a few years ago, Jim. Yeah. We had a construction yeah. grant and a portion of the lottery funds went into uh, capital purposes. Um, but, uh, well, yeah, I know the state is... away when the times got... I'm, not, I'm talking about consolidation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, the state no. had a 50, $55 million program in the early 2000s. They cut it in half, you know, during the 2000s, you know, and, and then it's gone away completely. In fact, the literary fund has sort of been drained and not even been used much since the Great Recession. So there's been very little state aid for capital outlay in, in, in quite a while. But there was a program during the 10 year period, the, the uh, 20, 2029. Well, and that was. Mm. But it wasn't it wasn't for consolidations. It was just general. Everyone got some money. Right. In the in the Clifton Forge Town reversion, you know, our school system uh, took the difference between the two deposit indexes and put that into a capital improvement because it, it would, wouldn't be a recurring experience. Mm -hmm. um, so a good idea. You know, but if we if we're not basing this on the local deposit index, it's not right. going to be a be a number we can really. Nothing be said. You can't. What you can't ask for it this time. If you've got capital outlay needs, you know. But, but that. You know, well, if you're talking about debt service, though, you know, or building a bond, then it's different. So I think the state would help us with historical tax credits. The historic tax credits. Mm -hmm. It's happened before for school buildings. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has. Winchester, uh -huh. other places. Jim, will you repeat what you said earlier about uh, your thoughts on on? the governor's budget and 
Governor, uh, the governor's energy budget was um, Tuesday, and um, it's it's an interesting uh, it was it was an interesting budget. I've seen a lot of them, um, Mr. Delegate Austin. I've seen 38 of them. So, um, of your age? Yeah, I am showing my age. So I saw how long I yeah. for, for you. Yeah, not as long as him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this was an this was quite an interesting one. Uh, I, I, this is my view, and I'm going to be doing presentations on this because I, I do a lot of those on this subject. He has a pretty conservative first year forecast, only 1.8% revenue growth. I, I find that to be quite conservative. It's, he, he's being conservative because he's worried about the uh, uh, taxpayer behavior of non withholding or wealthier individuals in the spring. Because right now things are going quite well. We're running at 8.5% through the first five months, revenue growth for the general fund. Um, so he's expecting a big, and part of it's due to the new tax policy changes the state did last year for increased standard deduction and, and the, and the able to itemize property taxes, you know, if you itemize. So, but we have a 28% year-to-date increase in the stock market too. And so, I, I think the risks are the upside in the first this year. He's more normalized in the second 21 and 22, it's about 4% revenue growth, which is kind of average. Um, yes, no recession is, but the, the thing is, there's some built-in safety valves in this budget. He's got a $300 million revenue reserve in the second year he's put in. He's got two $100 million contingencies just sort of there. $100 million the first year, $100 in the second year. I've never seen that. Just kind of lay it out there in his budget, say, here you go, General Assembly, spend it as you wish, so to speak. Um, although there's no state employee increase in there at all, teacher salary is only in the second year. He put a lot of money into the at-risk add-on. He put it into guidance counselors. He put it in some ESL. He uh, floated um, 150 million over the two years from <coughs> games of skill. These lottery machines that are going out there, he sort of plugged that into, into the calculation. And he, but that's. That's up to the General Assembly to decide whether they're going to regulate it, whether they're going to get this revenue, and how much it really is. So that I kind of take that out. It's we're still regulated. Yeah. We well, have to regulate. We're, we're losing, we're losing we're way too much money on right, the right, right. Because of the machines. But my fear is it's going to get caught up in the casino business. Right. There's got to be a, a gambling deal of some sort. Those machines are going to be caught up in the legislature. Right. I was wondering, sir, whether you just outlaw them. Pardon? Whether you just outlaw it. And so the revenue goes away. We could. So so that's but now we need the rep, well, yeah, yeah. A lot of money comes back to a lot. Of but I don't, I don't see that. All right. So, so can I ask one question while we're talking about lottery and education? How much of the actual lottery fund now goes toward education? All of it. Yeah. It, we here a couple of years ago we restored it. We started restoring it incrementally. So it's it back to what was originally. Yeah. Okay. Here's it how does, it, it doesn't really make any difference. No, it's minuscule. They just took it from somewhere else. Yes. Now here, here's how it works. The lottery is really general funds. That's right. how I. That's why I think it. So if the lottery goes up, it all technically by law goes into K-12. So you can never say it doesn't go there because by law it does. What happens is if the lottery goes up, let's say times are not as good, the general assembly or the governor can reduce the general funds going in. So it it becomes fungible. That's where there's always the complaint. Is that let's say the lottery goes from 600 to 650 times aren't so good, but just remove 50 million in general funds. The lottery's still going there, general funds. So it's really just part of the general fund pot, if you know what I mean. That's how it really works. That's the way dedicated revenues work. Jim's exact correct. And uh, what I've always uh, uh, told my classes when I was teaching this subject is if the dedicated revenue meets or exceeds your needs, then it counts. But that's the only instance that it does ever do. I'll give you another example. So the governor's proposing a 30 cent increase in the tobacco tax. And so the tobacco tax money, we already have 30 cents. That goes into a, to a health care fund. That fund is used to pay help the, the state match for Medicaid. Well, the rest of the state matches general funds. So as that goes up, general funds can go down. Same thing as water. Okay. Years ago, I, used, I served as an advisor for the Virginia Education Association. 
and they didn't know what to do when they started proposing the lottery, whether to support it or not. And I said, support it, but make it dedicated for a purpose that uh, you don't now have. And so the VEA pushed for it, and they got it when it was initially passed. Half of it went into <coughs> purposes, which was new for the state. So in that instant, for the time that it served uh, for capital outlay, it was going to education. Dedicated. Dedicated. Yeah. <laughs> but it, I, mean, I knew it wouldn't last, but I, I got a little money out of it. Too many clever people. <laughs>